Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope y'all had a great Thursday. Uh, we're going to continue to talk about the tropics in this video and really talk about Sam, which really has the chance to um, almost rapidly intensify over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. In fact, by the time some of you watch this video, uh, that we may have Hurricane Sam, but right now we have Tropical Storm Sam. Um, the, the 8 p.m. update's coming up here shortly. I might have this here in this video here in just a second. But um, there's been a little bit of changes, but overall there is still a lot of inconsistency in the models as in regards to where this is going to go. But I will tell you, most models do have this going out to sea, but it's going to get awfully close to areas like Puerto Rico and the uh, northern areas of the Lesser Antilles. So it's what's worth mentioning because this does have the chance to directly impact someone. So we're going to break that down, and it's still... I tell you what, the, the pattern is very close to almost kind of looking like a Hurricane Hugo type setup where you had an upper cutoff low here in the Gulf of Mexico and a blocking high right here that kind of streamlined this uh, Hurricane Hugo right into South Carolina. I'm not saying we're going to have a Hurricane Hugo or anything, guys. It's definitely not what I'm saying, but I'll show you what I'm talking about in regards to that here in a second, a little later in this video. So we're going to talk about, run through the models. Um, we're also going to break down um what's driving this as far as steering and why it's going to rapidly intensify over the next uh really the couple days really has the potential to become a major hurricane actually much quicker than what we were thinking yesterday so we're going to break this down this video if you guys have not subscribed definitely hit the subscribe button like the video if you like it i'm trying to get rid of a, the crud or the cold right now and uh, it is kicking my butt it's just lingering and lingering so uh Prayers, definitely appreciate for that. And if any, any of y'all got any prayers that I can pray for, anybody in the comments can. Drop them in the comments. It gives everybody an opportunity to pray for one another. And uh, take a prayer advantage of that. Prayer is powerful. So thank you all for the amazing support. Had a lot of growth over the last couple of days. And let's get going. So obviously it's pretty much an eyesore where Sam is right now. Um, it's it's getting that look already. And we'll get a little bit closer look to it right here. Uh, it's definitely got a nice spin to it. In fact, by the time some of you watch this, maybe overnight, this might get already upgraded to a hurricane. Um, but uh, I really am starting to think this is going to be a really compact storm, meaning compact hurricane. It's going to be very intense, but it's not going to be a huge storm, I don't think. Um, and, you know, we'll be able to sh I'll be able to show you that a little bit more here in the models and what I'm talking about. But this storm is getting its act together quick. The fact that it's strengthening pretty early on in its life uh, makes me believe that this has a chance to um, gain a little bit more latitude as a stronger storm is able to go a little bit further north. A weaker storm kind of gets caught up in a different area of currents, if you will, in the uh, in the upper la uh, layers of the atmosphere and causes it kind of meander more west. A stronger storm would, I believe, cause this to move a little bit more in a northerly, westerly direction as opposed to more of a westerly um, direction but let's get going here and let me see if I can get an update here it is still only 737 and up still the 5 p.m. update so this might get upgraded to a 70 mile per hour storm might be a hurricane by the time you guys watch this um, so right now it's still a tropical storm 60 mile per hour storm per the latest 5 p.m. update here but is forecast to become a major hurricane as early as uh, Friday night into Saturday morning um, so, you know, you, you look at the cone uncertainty, yeah, there's, there's no land masses, and it really has this going out in the sea. I will mention it is a battle between the European and the GFS model right now. And the GFS, ever since it upgraded last year, it has really been not dominant necessarily, but it is, it is definitely winning the battle in the tropics um, against the European. The GFS has, has been pulling its weight pretty well. It's been the, the dominant model in general. Um, we'll look at tropical tidbits as far as the model intensity, and, and as you can tell, it has this thing intensifying, almost rapid intensification ongoing here in the next 24 to 48 hours, and this may be a major hurricane as early as Saturday, which is a Category 3 or higher. Most model guidance has this reaching a Category 2, Category 3 hurricane. As far as where it's going, it's matching up pretty well with the cone of uncertainty, which is this right here. Um, so uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to directly impact the Lesser Antilles, but I really think that it could come very close. Going forward, if we take a look at the GFS here, here's the storm right here. If y'all hear my kids in the background, I do apologize, but you know, I do have two little girls, and we are um, starting to get ready for bed. So um, anybody who watches, been watching my videos for a while, I knew I have two little girls. So um, close the door. You hear them through the walls. It is what it is, but thank you all for tuning in anyways. Um here you go. You have a um, 
Tropical Storm Sam. At this point, might be, be a hurricane as we're getting into tomorrow evening. And this is just, just moving, you know, due west, northwest. Look how slow it's going. Every time I click this, that's six hours. Very slow moving storm. So, you know, we get into early next week. It doesn't feel like the storms really went anywhere. But we have a major hurricane at this point, And it's going to get awfully close, according to the latest GFS, but just north of the Lesser Antilles. And uh, then it starts to go out to sea. Um, but then it gets caught up in what you call an upper trough. Um, or a, a cutoff low, if you will, and it gets pulled in and almost wants to plow out right into areas like Nova Scotia. So you got to watch out areas of southeast Canada for this too. But um, there's also another storm behind it. Um, I'm really surprised at how much development showing up here in the main development region this late in September and as we're getting into early October. Um, so it's having some, you know, it's having a hard time turning off out there. But uh, you know, the good news is is what we thought was going to be a dominant ridge of high pressure for the majority of hurricane season has uh, not really been so, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, if it was the case, then we'd have more of these storms threatening the U.S. But um, it's still been a very active hurricane season. But, you know, when you when you try to compare it to um, last hurricane season, it's not comparable. You can't really compare anything necessarily to last hurricane season. Last hurricane season was absolutely historic. So if you try to compare the two, it, it's it's you really can't because you're comparing something to an historical season. But this fit is this season is very active too compared to normal already. I mean we're already on at the, the almost at the end of the hurricane alphabet and about to enter another one. In fact, we we most likely will. But you look at the latest European model, it's a little bit more southwest and it actually trended a little bit more southwest today. But it has a major hurricane as early as midway next week. We'll be talking about the storm for the next two weeks, no doubt, all the way into October. But um, the, the you know the European is much more closer to areas of the northern Lesser Antilles like Puerto Rico. Um, so you know areas like this, you know even the Dominican Republic, watch out because this storm is going to get really close. Bahamas, watch out. Everybody needs to watch out, and I really tell I'll tell you why here in a second when we look at what's going on. But this has a big time major hurricane off the coast of the southeast next weekend so i mean a major hurricane um so it's something we need to watch because you know a lot of times these things go out to sea and they can scrape the coast and get really close but you know this one's going to get really close if we take the european as if it's going to happen you look at the latest gef ensembles one thing that you'll notice is the stronger storms are more north the weaker storms are more south um, uh, you know, so that tells me that the stronger the storm is earlier on, maybe the more chance that this has a chance to go just out to sea. But I'll tell you what, if you live in Bermuda, you need to really watch out because, um, it doesn't matter how you slice it. Any model run has it very close to Bermuda and, uh, potentially impacting you guys. So, um, there's a big time spread on the GEF ensemble, GEFS ensembles. And, um, so we need to watch out here. Um, but that is a strong signal for a major hurricane just northeast of the Lesser Antilles as we get into about early to midway next week. Um, you look at the latest European ensembles, um, all of them have them going out to sea. That's good news, right? But watch out for Bermuda. So you need to watch out for this area. But this could shift. This is going to go back and forth. There's still some members that kind of keep it going this way. So uh, it's still something we need to pay attention to. Now, let me take a big deep breath. I don't have as much... Um, <clears throat> staying power as far as how long I can talk as usual because I'm just fighting a little cold but right here we have heightened anomalies so the bluish colors those can be troughs they can be cut off lows upper level lows the reds the oranges those are usually ridging of high pressure so we have our storm right here we're going to look at the European for example um, moving forward we're getting into late next week so almost uh, we're all the way into next weekend this is when the storm is getting very close to the southeast you have a cutoff low that's very distinct on the European. You have a big time ridge of high pressure, and you're thinking, "Well, dang, this cutoff low is gonna is gonna pull this into the U.S. and this ridge of high pressure is just trapping it down here." So this thing has, you know, no other route to go but right into the Carolinas. But it doesn't do that. I don't I don't know why it doesn't do that. It weakens the ridge of high pressure, and this cutoff low doesn't really capture the storm or influence at all. But this only goes to 240 hours out. Now, you know, to me, that looks a lot like Hugo. You know, with Hugo, the reason you had such a rare scenario where it plowed right into just north of Charleston 
So you had a cutoff load right here, a little bit more into the Gulf of Mexico, ridging a high pressure right over top, and it just slid right into South Carolina. And more, you know, a big reason why is this cutoff low allowed it to get pulled in a little bit more further west, and it really sped up the storm. Um, you look at the GFS ensemble, it's a lot different. Um, you're going forward here, slowing the storm down, you're getting into the late week, getting into this weekend. It immediately, just north of the Lesser Antilles, gets captured by some kind of cutoff low and immediately gets pulled north and then slingshotted into Nova Scotia. It's, it's pretty wild. So, um, the cutoff lows are big influences. Influencers, they can be act as pullers sometimes for uh, tropical systems. So, they're, they're, they can be dangerous. You got to watch out for them. I will mention there's all the fuel in the world for this, for the, for, for a major hurricane. You don't have to worry about uh, sea surface temperatures as far as the hurricane worrying about it. Um, they're, they're very much warm enough to support a major hurricane as they're in the mid to eight upper 80s, well, about the low to mid 80s in Fahrenheit. One thing I also mention is the upper, uh, upper, a favorable upper level uh, pattern here is, is there's a nice outflow going around the storm, kind of creating its own environment. You know, I mention this in every single one of my videos when this is the case. It's called an anticyclonic flow. It's a flow moving in the opposite direction as the actual hurricane. So when this happens, it helps to ventilate the system, if you will, and uh, it creates a, its own moist environment and it creates its own environment, which it can protect itself from dry air and shear from getting wrapped up in the circulation. So that looks to be the case with this. That's why it's going to strengthen so much over the next several days. And then as it turns, it interacts with different other things and might lose some steam, but we'll watch it. We'll be talking about this one for a while. Um, I will talk about local weather too here in the eastern U.S. when I see anything worth you know, warranted to talk, to talk about. But this is going to be a big storm out in the Atlantic, so we're going to continue to really try to figure out what's going to happen with this. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for the support. Had a lot of growth over the last few days, and I really appreciate it. Um, but that's all I got. Y'all have a great, great end to your week.